Now, you've probably noticed by now that we can actually just multiply in our heads using multiplication tables like 6 times 2, 12, 8 times 1, 8, or 7 times 2, 14, and so on. And that is indeed the case. Let me now show you the shortcut for decimal multiplication. If you have decimals, multiply as if there were no decimal points. Just use your multiplication tables or whatever. And then you have to put the decimal point in the answer somewhere. And where is given by rule number 2. The number of decimal digits in the answer has to be equal to the sum of decimal digits in all the factors. Okay, so how many decimal digits will you have in the answer? You just check how many decimal digits were in all the numbers you multiplied. What's that, Matthew? Prove it, prove it. He's saying prove it. Yeah, actually, I will. I'm going to show you why it is so over here at the very last. Just be patient, Matthew, okay? Just a little bit. Let's first use the rule a little bit to see how it works. Here I have 2 tenths times 4 tenths. So I multiply as if there were no decimal points. 2 times 4. 8. But then I count the decimal digits here. There's one decimal digit here and one here. So in total, a total of 2. I need to have 2 decimal digits here. So it's going to be like this. And then fill in with zeros. Here, 3 times 12. 36. And now I count my decimal digits. 1, 2, and 3. I need 3 here, so I need to again put the 0 here, like that. Here I have 1, 2, 3 decimal digits, and 0 decimal digits here, okay? 11 times 5, 55. And 3 and 0, so 3 decimal digits here, 1, 2, and 3. Here, 200 times 8 is 1600. And now here's one decimal digit, so one decimal digit here too. Okay? I could now simplify this to plain 160. I don't need this ending zero. And notice that this makes sense because you could also think of it, as we did before, as 8 tenths of 200. 1 tenth of 200 would be 20, and so 8 tenths would be 8 times 20, or 160. Here, we multiply those three numbers. 2 times 9 times 1 equals 18. And then the decimals. There's 1, 2, and 3 decimals again. And here, 4,000 times 5 thousandths. So I will go 4,000 times 5, okay? I won't, I won't omit these zeros from this number. It is just that this number I treat as if there was no decimal point. It would be just plain 5, but this is still 4,000 times 5. 20,000, okay? And now the decimal point, 3 decimal digits here, none there, total 3. So over here. So this is basically just 20. Okay, a little word problem. Only one. For this lesson, a $12 shirt is on sale for 3 tenths off. What's the new price? Okay, imagine this is your whole price. The, all of the whole price is here. And you take off three-tenths of the price. How much of the price is left? What fraction of the price is left? If you take three-tenths off, you have seven-tenths left, right? So we will multiply seven-tenths times the price. Okay, seven-tenths times the price. And now, multiply as if there was no point here, 7 times 12 equals 84. And then check, okay, I need to put one decimal digit there, so the point goes there. And then put your dollar sign here, and then, well, because it's a money amount, we want to have the cents there as 40 cents. Now lastly, I will show you where this rule comes from. Here's two examples, and I will write them with fractions. Fractions will tell us the proof. Eight hundredths times six tenths. Now, when you multiply fractions, you might not have learned this yet. If so, don't worry about it. But if you already know how to multiply fractions, you go eight times six equals forty-eight, and then you multiply the bottom numbers and you get thousand. Okay, and now I go from this to the decimal. Forty-eight thousandths as a decimal is, of course, this here, 0 0.048. 
So this one has three decimals. You see, however many decimal digits you have here, then your denominator for your fraction will have that many zeros. If there's one decimal, the denominator is 10, because it's tenths. Two decimals means hundredths, two zeros. Three decimals would mean three zeros or thousandths. And now when I'm multiplying here, 100 times 10, that is multiplied by, you'd go one, by, one times one is one, and then you gather all your zeros together over here. So you're adding however many zeros you have here is how many zeros you put into this denominator here. And however many zeros are here is however many decimal digits are here. Let me show it to you again. Two thousandths times three tenths times four hundredths, okay? I multiply the top numbers. Two times, three times, four is 24. In the bottom numbers, when you're multiplying those kind of numbers, powers of 10, okay, you just, you're going to get 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and then however many zeros are here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, is how many zeros you put here. Six zeros, so millionths, okay? And however many zeros are here is how many decimal digits go here. So 24, and I have to have six decimal digits. Okay, like that. 24 millionths. Okay, I hope this helps.